10 dates a week. I don't like anyone from school. Because the same people that would judge you for sleeping with someone on the first date is the same person that picks their nose and eats it. The chokehold. <coughs> Just fallen a bit out of love with Instagram because everyone, <laughs> everyone looks the same at the moment. Guys. <laughs> It's been a hot fucking second, hasn't it? Since I've done a drive with me, and it's not really gonna be a drive with me, we're gonna drive through the Starbucks drive through with me, but then we're gonna park up and chat. Um, I've only actually just got my car back. Little update, if anyone cares. Uh, my, I had like the worst day at the weekend. Like my car's kind of been playing up a little bit. Uh, turn the engine off. Okay. Will it come back on? That was always going to be the problem. Oh, guys, I've missed my car. I've been without it for like a week. Um, let me just put that in there. Um, so yeah, basically, um, my car's been having like a little bit of like intermittent starting problems. Like if anyone was to ever get in the car with me, I'd be like, guys, going to be hit or miss if it starts. It normally did end up starting, uh, except on Friday, April Fool's Day. All right, and if you saw my story, you know I hate april fool's day i like i don't think well i think pranks are funny but like not not when it's like on me like i i haven't got a sense of humor when it comes to that i'm sorry but um yeah on april fool's day friday i was about to drive to my pt session and i wouldn't start and like i said normally it does after a little while but this time it like half an hour had passed i i'd, I'd missed like my whole pt session essentially and i was like fuck like it's not going to start, so I'm going to have to, like, book it into the garage, thinking, I'm sure if I try again tomorrow, it'll work. I'll get it to the garage. I'm pretty sure it's the battery, like a car ba like the car battery is the problem. Um, so, yeah, booked into the garage the next day. Uh, went out to my car, like, an hour and a half before my garage appointment, thinking this is going to give me plenty of time to get the car started. It wouldn't start and then i tried so many times to get the car to start that it just started like my car just started freaking out thinking like what's going on like i've any any like voltage uh that i had uh in the battery i drained it like attempting to start this car like so many times and then I uh, had to, oh yeah. And then the next amazing thing was like, right, the car won't start, can't even get to the garage. Ran the garage to be like, guys, I can't even get the car to you. Like it won't start, can, like, can someone come out and help me? And they were like, no, we're not insured to do that. So then I had to phone the AA and like join the AA and then get them to come out. And they were basically saying that they were gonna do like all the diagnostics checks and stuff that like I had paid the garage to do already. And I was like, you don't understand. I was like, I, I don't need you to do that. I just need you to just, like get my car started so I can go to the garage and get it done where I've already paid t to have it done. But they were like, oh, no, oh, we don't do that. Like, so I was like, you know what? OK, fuck it then. I'm obviously going to have to pay for you guys to come out and do it here. So then, yeah, the AA guy came out. We tried the batch. Sorry, I don't know why I'm explaining this. This is like I'm just giving you a little update on my car. Um, and like, does anybody else do this? Hang on, I'll get there. But like, like the AA man was like, uh, thought it was the battery. So, you know, like when you try and like jumpstart a car, I was doing that. And then I tried to turn the car on and essentially like it made this sound that it's been making like all of the times that it's been like attempting to like go on. It goes like, and he was like, ah, he's like, to me, that sounds like it's your starter motor. And I was like, okay and he was like so the combination of you having like a pretty much flat battery now and your starter motor not working yeah you're gonna need to take it to the garage and i was like Ugh! i was like i know that's where i've been trying to go but yeah basically he was like whacking my starter motor and he was like try it now tried it now and then the engine came on and i was like hella fucking luya like it's come on and he was like well whatever you do don't turn it off so you need to go to the garage now and like get this kind of sorted essentially and i was like but I'm, i've missed my appointment i don't even know if they're going to be able to see me so i like rang them up and told them 
and said like the AA guys here and he thinks it's the starter motor and he and like the engine's on right now and I don't think I can turn it off because I've got an automatic car and I need the engine on in order for like the gear stick to come up um so like I, I, I can't put it in neutral and be towed anywhere without the engine like being on so that's why he was like, whatever you do, like, you need to, like, do it now while the engine's on. And then the garage was basically saying, like, oh, do you know what? Nine times out of ten, it's actually not the starter motor, and I'd hate to charge you for it. So you bet you might be better off taking it to, a like, a Land Rover dealership. And I was like, oh, my God. Because I had to make this decision, essentially, now. <laughs> I feel so sorry for the AA man. I just burst into tears. That's what I was going to ask. Does that happen to anyone else? Like, I, whenever I feel overwhelmed... I go into a complete shutdown and I can't actually even speak. Like if I try and get words out, they don't, like they don't, but my body needs to like release something. So I normally just end up crying and the AA man was like, are you okay? Like, oh, it's all right. I was like, I'm not, I'm not even upset. Like I, I just don't know what to do. Like I'm just a bit overwhelmed suddenly. But it all worked out in the end, guys. First, literally, first world problems. Oh, my, my Land Rover, that broke down. <sighs> Shut up. Um, I've got the car back now. And I thought, you know what? I've, I've literally just come from there. And it's really near a Starbucks. And I was like, I haven't really had a coffee today. I'm going to get a coffee and chat with you guys. Because um, now I'm in a good mood. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to grab a coffee. And I asked you guys to send me in topics to discuss. Not necessarily, like, questions, but just topics back in the car if we want to do um drive with me's in the future we can do it i never wanted to promise them before because my car was having starting problems and i was like imagine if i said like yeah let's do a drive with me and um i don't know yeah the car didn't even start and then i couldn't even do it so without further ado what do i want to drink i might ask for a brown sugar Shake an espresso with regular milk. Or should I just get an iced sugar-free? Do you know what? I'm going to get an iced sugar-free vanilla latte. It's been a while. Right, guys. I just turned the engine off in order to do this. Is it me or is it really zoomed in? I kind of wish it was more zoomed out. Anyway. Need to move myself forward a little bit. Three, two, one. Engine side. That's a good sign. Right. Oh, let's get a coffee, eh? It was, what music's gonna come on really loud? Let's turn it down, turn it down. Why is my car gonna tell me service required? All right, let's turn this down. Let's get a coffee. This is your time, this this is your sign to get uh, a coffee as well so we can sit down and have a chat. Anyway, fucking hell, person in front of me is ordering the whole menu by the looks of it. Hey, what can I get for you? Hi, can I please get a grande iced sugar-free vanilla latte, please? No, that's everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know why I've just done the window up in it. Oh. Oh. My gosh. I wonder if they know that they're there. Oh, that's really sad. Sorry, there's like two homeless people like asleep, like under the Starbucks. And you know, and this is what really upsets me about the world that we're in at the moment. Number one, just obviously the amount of homeless people. But number two, who actually carries around change anymore? Like we're becoming such a cashless society that I just feel awful. Oh, they've got lots of like drinks and food. That makes me feel a bit better. But like, oh no. Right. Got me latte, although... Is it? Yeah. I, I don't know. It looks really pale. Anyway, cheers. Well, that is nice. It's been a while. Been a while. I'm not sure how my teeth feel about there not being any straws anymore, even with these cups. I know I'm sure it's to reduce plastic, but weren't they doing cardboard straws anyway? Anywho, let me see what topics you guys have sent in. I actually haven't even looked at all. I could probably guess. Right. Oh, my God. Lots. Lots to go through. Let me just start at the bottom then and work my way up. Fucking hell. By the way, also, my legs 
absolutely kill. I'm sure there'll be questions about um, health and fitness and stuff in there. Um, but let's see what people have said. Someone said about age pressure. Like, is that even still a thing? Do you know what? I feel like, no. Am I assuming you mean just the pressure to have certain things done by a certain age and it's quite scary i said it to like someone the other day or actually they might have said it to me they were like fucking hell my life's escaping me and i was thinking well, things are going like quite quickly but i know like people say age is just a number when it comes to like relationships but i feel i totally agree with that but more like um not necessarily with relationships but more just like life in ge oh no life in general that did fuck all <laughs> damn it the weird lighting but i mean like i absolutely don't feel 25 and i don't actually even think 25 is that old or is it i don't know but like i'm actually 26 this year can you believe it because I don't feel it, and I definitely feel like I don't act it, but then what is a 26-year-old meant to act like? Do you know what I mean? And I feel like times have evolved so much, and just, like, ge like our our generation is probably one of, like, the first ones where, like, I don't know, you, you we're starting doing everything, like, so much, like, younger and stuff, and people that are our age, we've kind of, like, been through, like, all of the, like, the technology and the new apps and stuff that, like, our parents, like, don't, like, wouldn't even know the foggiest thing about unless you were, like, really heavily, like, involved with that. But, like, so I feel like we're quite, like, young at heart as, like, a generation, like, and we always probably will be. Um, so... I don't really feel the pressure to get things done by, like, a certain age, not at all. Yes, it's, like, a bit, like, when you meet someone, you're like, how old are you? And they're, like, 21. And you're, like, <laughs> But I wish I was 21. But I feel 21 on the inside. And I think as long as, you know, you're not putting pressure on yourself, because realistically, we've been through, t like, two years of our lives didn't really even count. So technically... I'm 23, because two years were an absolute write-off of just, like, oh, that man's trolley nearly escaped him, of just, like, not living, essentially, being, like, locked up and not living and just, like, experiencing a pandemic like that. Like, not every... Well, now every person has, but, like, you know, that's not something we'd, like, experience in our lifetime yet. Um, so maybe that's why I still feel young at heart. So, yeah, we've been through, like, a lot. Uh, that's put like restraints on things like just have made everyone's paths in life different you know so no rush yeah does that help i don't know i'm just trying to say like I'm, i still feel young so don't remind me that i'm not 20 anymore although i was when i went home like not that long ago i referred i was talking to my dad and i referred to me and my sisters as like his teenagers and he was like Rachel, number one, you're 25, and number two, your sister is 27, so not teenagers, and I was like, oh my god, I can't believe I even said that, like, anyways, moving on, do you know what, I, I, from scrolling down just then, I got a lot of people asking me my opinion on the Chris Rock and Will Smith situation, This is why I don't like these cups. Because they they their ice cubes are like thin and they actually do fit through that little hole. And then I fucking inhale it. Okay. My opinion is I saw a TikTok. Of course I saw a TikTok. When have I not seen a TikTok? Um I saw a TikTok that it was like a classic. My friend works, my friend knows someone that works at the Oscars, and basically, obviously Chris Rock is a comedian, but he will have uh you know help writing like his uh speech intro whatever making jokes to the crowd whatever obviously uh they, they were deciding who to, uh you know for chris to like speak to will smith was up for was it his first oscar nomination and he won it or like it was just his first oscar that he was likely going to win or did he know know he was gonna win anyway everyone just knew it was a big night for will smith so they were obviously like we got to uh, give a joke to Will Smith. And they and someone else suggested the G.I. Jane joke. And I think 
one of the other writers said, oh, no, nah, if that was me and you said that about my wife, you know, I'd go up and smack him or something. I'd, like, smack him around the face. And then apparently someone was like, well, that could be a good idea because everyone knows that these kind of, like, award shows are getting more and more just, like, staged and, like, people aren't really tuning in as much. And I think they thought that would get the ratings in, wouldn't it? Like, something like that. And apparently they kept putting that idea higher and higher and it was getting approved and it was everyone was kind of saying like well, okay but like you'd obviously just have to get will and chris to agree to it and apparently they spoke to their people and they didn't not agree but it wasn't set in stone that that was going to happen so actually on the night nobody knew if chris was going to make that joke and i think if he was going to make the joke he needed to be aware that if he made that joke uh, Will Smith might go up and smack you across the face, but apparently all of the staff were told, like, if you see Will Smith getting up, don't stop him. Like that, we like we've let this happen type thing. That could just be a complete conspiracy because obviously everything that's kind of happened afterwards, like if people had like approved it and stuff, he wouldn't be maybe apologizing so much and stuff but like <laughs> wasn't that a good story though but like i hope that was kind of true but i'm assuming it's probably not because he's had to issue apologies and like isn't gonna attend the oscars ever again or like something like that but then i do think like he did still like win and like don't you think if that wasn't allowed they would have had to have maybe cut that category or like pause the category like i don't really know but my like thoughts on it in general if it was legit is on Chris Rock's behalf, as a comedian, you should never hit below the belt, always above, or like, you know, about topics that are laughable, or at least you need to know that if you are going to go below the belt, that that person is going to find that funny. Um, and I, And I think it's important to do your research on, you know, who you're going to make jokes about, for that kind of exact reason because you don't want it to just well you don't want no one to laugh do you like at the end of the day when you're a comedian you want people to laugh um and i know jada 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 um had recently gone out to say like obviously with her alopecia it's been really awful for her as i'm sure with most people with alopecia like it's just awful um like treatment and just you know the mental impact it has like having to shave your hair off and like just like losing all of your hair um so obviously she was not going to find that funny, you know, and that was hitting below the belt from Chris, like, you know, anything else. But like that really, you should have poked fun at like their relationship, their open relationship or something that they openly talk about. And oh, my God. Yay. Well, I think this is yay. You know, I mentioned earlier about the homeless people. The police have arrived and I hope it's to escort them somewhere like safe. Oh, Anyway, sorry, update on that. But, yeah, I think that was below the belt. Like, that's not funny. Um, should never have been said, really. But then Will, not point blank period, violence is, like, never the answer. Especially, well, actually, from both parties. Both was so wrong. It was, because it was in front of millions of people. And, like, her face was up on the big screen. Like, how is he going to make a joke about her alopecia? Like, and then the cameras just, like, panned to her. Like, that's just humiliating. Especially if you're not laughing either and you're sat there like, like, do you know what I mean? But then, yeah, obviously for Will to go up and smack him across the face in front of millions, what kind of message does that show? Like, you know, and I think what he should have done, if he really was just so upset and angry about it, he would have made so much more of an impact and probably humiliated Chris Rock more if he just, like, ripped the mic out of his hand and, like, basically said, like, shut the fuck up. Number one, like, how dare you, like, make a joke about my wife's illness, like, you know, and just, like, brought more of, like, a verbal attention to, like, alopecia and, like, maybe, like, the, if they're working with charities and stuff, like, just more attention to that and, like, had a drop the mic moment of, like, standing up for his wife that way. I think that would have been so much better so much more impactful and you know not basically illustrated that like violence is the way to solve that but at the end of the day 
when you're in those moments and you're just so upset and like you can see that your partner is just so upset that's his wife and i know she everyone makes jokes that she's humiliated him like loads like in her red table talks about the relationship and stuff at the end of the day they're obviously it's a very complicated relationship and like he obviously just feels very defensive when it comes to her and like you're not really thinking straight in those moments and to be fair not that this is a justification but i'm seeing people being like he like punched him across the face it was a slap like a real slap which obviously fucking hurts but people do that like professionally like and obviously it's condoned in that sense because it's not gonna you know it's not too bad do you know what i mean like you've seen the, like the professional slap tournament it was kind of like that maybe will should you know do that instead that was fucking close Oh my god, it wasn't even, it wasn't even, I didn't even, I, I, I'm having a breakdown, no please, please not the tracksuit, please, come on white, ah! this is why you carry antibacterial wipes in the car, oh, actually that's, oh, it's gone. God, nearly overreacted then. That would have been embarrassing. Anyway, so yeah, that's kind of what I think. I don't think he should have smacked him across the face. No way. Um, he should have made much more of an impact and, like, been a voice for, like, people with alopecia and what they go through and why it's not funny to make bold jokes um, with his words, not his hand. Oh, my God. Okay. Lots, lots of ones I want to talk about. Someone said, like, the grammys and the oscars outfits um i definitely think that the grammys outfits were better i was looking at some of the oscars outfits and i was thinking what like i always like um i'm on that kind of side of tiktok when it comes to things like that there's certain people that i really love um do you guys know that guy is his name charles that goes like Oscar's outfits, let's talk about it. Got a really, like, soothing voice. And then there's this girl that does outfit reviews as well. And I kind of agreed with, like, a lot of them. Who did I think? Oh, do you know who I thought should have done way better? Zoe Kravitz? Like, didn't she just wear that, like, pink... non-shape, like, dress? Like, I don't know. She's just done this, obviously, Batman, which I've not gone to see yet, which I really need to, where she's this, like, sexy you know, woman, and I know that's just, like, a character, but, like, roll with it, babe. Like, wear something that's gonna... Or something, like, I don't know, something, like, black and just, like, on theme for that character that you, you're being sort of known for at the moment. But yeah, it just didn't really do anything for her, and I thought, oh, she could have done something, like, really... I don't know. Cool. But, you know, I definitely thought the Oscars was better than... No, definitely thought Grammy's outfits were better than the Oscars um i'm trying to like think in my head like what people wore the one outfit i did not like was hayley bieber's outfit at the oscar uh fucking hell grammys that like white sheet it was i'm it was very chic and very just like but justin was wearing this like big balenciaga blazer pink hat like i feel like she Unless that was meant to be a representation of their, you know, images. Like, he's this, like, skater, rough, round the edges, oversized jacket, like, guy. And she's just this, like, heavenly angel in this, like, satin sheet thing. But I feel like maybe she, one of them should have, like, tied in with each other. And I think it should have been her tying in with him. And maybe wearing something Balenciaga. Um, because they just looked complete opposite but they had such a cute red carpet moment like kiss i like all those um pics of them and like the videos i think they're really cute anyway someone said the liam payne interview from the oscars lots of oscars opinions what's happened i was i like spoke to someone about this and they were like that's what cocaine does to you and i was like cocaine cocaine makes you talk in a different accent does it <laughs> i don't think so but maybe like drugs might just fuck with your head but is he on drugs? I don't think so. Can't imagine. No. He's probably, do you know what? He's probably all over the place. But do you know what? 
I was saying that as if it was just like, oh, he was dipping between, you know, English and an American accent. He was fully like English, then like Welsh, then American. Maybe he's just filming something at the moment, you guys, and it's just he's having to do accents or he's just around lots of different people. Because um, whenever I am around uh, my Australian family, I like slip into an Australian accent, like really, or like in some words, come out like Australian um, just creature of habit, so, but that's because I used to live there for four years, but yeah, I don't know, who knows, but I couldn't actually even watch it, I watched, like, 30 seconds, and it made me uncomfortable, because I was like, what the fuck is going on with this man, anyway, someone also said Harry Styles, now, that's a great topic, and I've never been a One Direction stan, never, and I've never seen myself as a Harry Styles stan, um, until recently, and I'm falling down the rabbit hole of Jack Harlow and Harry Styles. Would you put them in the same category of men, like, like in terms of looks, like shaggy hair, cheeky personality, like they know what they're doing when they're performing, and they appeal to the girlies and the gays, I think. I think I would put them in the same category, and I'm starting to see it, you guys. I'm starting to see it. I would actually love to see Harry Styles live because as much as I don't class myself as like a hardcore Harry stan, number one, I can appreciate him. I can just appreciate him. He's gorgeous. Can't wait to see him in that movie. Um, I think he'd be a great actor. And I love loads of his songs. His newest one, I love it. I was listening to it on the way here. It's such a like happy bop, like summer song like i really really like it so i would love to go see him i think he's actually in manchester I wonder if there's tickets anyone going to see harry styles in manchester let me know because hopefully i would like to go someone said coachella now glad you've asked this because i thought i'll probably get questions about this if i don't address it before i am not going to coachella um mainly because i don't have a passport at the moment I needed to renew my passport in order to go on my trips uh, in the upcoming months. Guys, double, double check the entry requirements for the countries that you're going to because your passport needs to be valid. Don't know why they're doing this. Like, because then what on earth is the point of an expiry date? I'm guessing because it's only applicable to like certain countries, but especially within Europe, they're being quite strict on it. Like, when I was coming back from Dubai, the man at the front desk was like, you need to get a new passport soon. I was like, yeah, I know. Basically, it needs to be six months valid from the expiry date in order to be able to travel to some places. And I'm going to Portugal at the end of May, and my passport expired, like, one of the last few months of this year. So, like, I just needed to get it done, and then I'm going to Mexico in June. And I don't think that was an entry requirement, but essentially I just needed to get it done. And it can take up to 10 weeks. So I was like, I've got to do it now, uh, which means no traveling for me at the moment. Although it said it can take up to 10 weeks and I've already had an email to be told it's, it's been printed. So I'm assuming it will be sent out fairly soon. I just know that there might be delays because obviously a lot of people are having to do this. They've like only really just introduced this rule. Um, and you can pay for Express, but I think... That's only for, like, emergencies. And it's, like, fucking a hundred and something pounds. And mine wasn't an emergency. I kind of forgot about Coachella. Um, so I just didn't pay for Express, and it's fine. Um, but Hannah and Mads are both going to Coachella, okay? it's But they're going separately. Like, uh, they're both going with brands. Different brands. Don't think I've been left behind. All right, now, you guys. I know you guys like to chatter. I've not been left behind. I've not not been invited. I just don't have a passport and I can't go. Um, which is fine. I've done Coachella once before. And I think because I've done it once before, I'm totally fine not going again because I'm not a massive festival girly anyway. Like, the things I don't like about festivals are the, like, waiting around, walking from stage to stage. It's not my thing. Never been into it not approved by me and therefore Coachella is that but like times 10 like you stay in hotels that are like 45 minutes from the actual festival so it's a lot of coaches back and forth um and when you get there 
when you get dropped off, it's like such a walk to the festival. Uh, so dusty. Everything's just so far apart. I think it's only if my like dream artist was going, which to be fair, Doja Cat is going, and I would love, love, love to see her live. Praying she goes on tour with The Weeknd because he's doing his global tour and they and they are touring together. Um, currently, it's just it's it's his world tour, but they've only announced America dates. I'm hoping they go on tour together in the UK because I will be going. I will sell my left arm to go to that doja cat in the weekend they're like my two two of my favorite artists um so yeah i would love to see doja cat live so and she is at coachella so i suppose that would make it worth it but it just it takes so much out of you like it's only three days but the jet lag when you get there and then when you come back it's like two weeks you're knocked out and i'm just on a good path with my like mentality in terms of being motivated with my fitness so actually, therefore, I probably should have gone. I would have got all my steps in. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not bothered that I'm not going. Because, um, yeah, I've already been once before. It's one of those, like, once-in-a-lifetime things because it's such a, like, experience, you know? And plus, everyone just, everyone around you just fucked up. <laughs> like, they're seriously fucked. <laughs> Don't know if it's changed. Last time I went was, like, years ago. But, yeah, just not not about that these days so yeah i'm not going but the girlies are going and i literally cannot wait for updates and the stories when they come back because i have so many stories from when i last went to coachella that's almost another reason why i don't want to go because like, i like that i went one time and i have all of these epic stories i'm excited to see everyone's outfits i wonder if the style is going to be different back then was everyone wearing like tassels and cowboy boots and stuff like i feel like it's going to be a sea of <laughs> cargo pants, maybe. <laughs> oh, I'd say. Anyways, right. Okay, next up. Single while in your 20s. Well, that's me. Um, Hello? That's like, I think that's the best thing, is it not? Like, I know, well, one, if you're in a, if you've been in a relationship since, you know, you were 18, you're still together, you're engaged, whatever. I think that's amazing. Like, if to find your soulmate or the person that you think you want to spend the rest of your life with that young, you've continued to make it work. You're not bothered about, you know, not having been with anyone else or whatever, and you guys are just both set. That's amazing. Like, congratulations, because I think that's so rare, and, you know, hold on to it. But if you are single in your 20s... Fucking go out and enjoy yourself. I'm only really sort of starting to understand the fun in dating. Like, I, I, I've clearly been missing out. Because I'm having, like, a good time at the moment. Just, like, going out on dates and stuff. Um, so, yeah, like, that's the fun of it. Dates. Go and play crazy golf with someone. Go bowling with someone. Who cares if you're going to see them again? Like, do you know what I mean? On to the next one. You know, obviously, if you, like, find a connection with someone and, you know, you get ghosts or whatever, it is a bit like, ugh, again. But, you know, that was obviously meant to happen. On to the next. It's just one more person to cross off the list to be like, you're not Mr. Right. Let me keep going. You know? Dating in your 20s. Although people say even as you get older as well, like, actually, if you're still single in your 30s, it's the best time ever. Do you know what I mean? Um, just try and learn to love it. That's what I've done. Learn to love it and just you know don't take everything too seriously go with the flow live in the moment which has been my new year's resolution like yeah live in the moment because there's no point stressing about shit that's not even happened if it comes to it and you need to start thinking your head then do that then but just living each day as it comes you know that's how you're gonna get the most out of life anyway and it's how you're gonna get the most out of dating don't they have not text you all day Fine, people are busy, like, do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, I'm just, I'm tr I try just not to, like, stress myself out too much about things that, you know, don't need to be stressed about. And dating is meant to be fun. And, yeah, I think it's about learning to love it, not taking things too seriously, going with the flow, living in the moment, doing things on your own terms, and, yeah, just having fun! It's the whole point of being young, Okay. Right, next up, a lot of people asking about 
having casual relationships in your early 20s and not searching for the one is that good it's just, like of course like go out d discover who you are what you like and if that means date going on like 10 dates a week to realize what it is that you do and don't like 10 dates a week rachel that means like two dates in one day oh whatever it takes you know people will never be ready for a relationship if you don't know what you do and don't like the people that are successful in their in relationships are usually the people that are content with themselves and know themselves like the best and know what they like know what they don't like know what they will put up with know what they won't put up with and that's how yeah why most why relationships are successful because both partners you know they're ready and they, they know what they're looking for type thing so dating in your 20s is meant to be the fun part of discovering what you do and don't like so you don't need the, all this pressure about finding the one fucking hell like i said we've been locked up for like two years essentially everyone's a bit scrambled and some people it takes longer to realize what it is that you that you want and what you don't want and you don't need to find you might never find the one and that was just your life plan do you know what i mean like why does it have to be i know it's nice to have someone but like it's not it's not compulsory to have a partner and to like be married with kids by the time you're 30 like if that's your goal then that's your goal fine you're work working towards something but don't put the pressure on yourself like times are very very different like my parents have been together since school okay how the fuck do you think that makes me feel and i'm like thinking i don't like anyone from school like i definitely did not meet my husband in school you know People have changed. We've got access to the internet now. Cheating is just so much more of a thing. Men suck more these days. Like, you know, so many factors contribute to why things may, might just be taking longer in life. And that's okay. Okay? Remember, it's okay. It's all calmed down, including me. But, yeah. I mean, that goes back to whoever asked about the age pressure thing. So many different things have affected our lives that have put a pause or just like have slowed things down that it's so important to not put that pressure on yourself because, yeah, things are just so different. And, you know, you need to, like, remember that it's not been a normal past couple of years, has it? People are very comfortable with their own company these days. So to actually find someone that, like, wants to get into a relationship probably going to take a lot more work your talking stage is probably going to be a little bit longer because people just want to be like you know 100 percent sure these days yeah is that even advice i feel like i've just like word vomited a bunch of crap but i hope that helps and <laughs> makes you feel better anywho let's have a wee scroll lots of people about that will smith drama again a fucking ice cubes anyway someone said how to know if you're okay with having casual sex? Well, do you know what it is? Number one, when it comes to casual sex, you've got to... I think when you're younger, there's a lot more pressure on... Oh my God, like, you don't kiss on the first date, don't have sex on the first date, they're not going to respect you. Like, when you're younger, that like, feels like such a big deal. But I think as you get older and you meet different people you realize that that's not really first date third date twelfth date it doesn't really matter a lot of people including myself like i think even as girls i, I don't know why we always just think it's boys that have the be all and end all decision about these things but i know when i first meet someone pretty much how i feel about them sexually in a sense of when i meet them isn't in is there an instant like wow like this person is gorgeous and then obviously when you're talking to them for like a little bit you know like they're you can get a sense of their energy if you're like going along the day like if you've like touched it all um i think if you've been on a date and there's been no physical touch or like even if just a handhold you you're probably not going to kiss or have sex so you know, don't worry about that. They're probably on the same page as you about that one. 
Um, I, I, I think it's very circumstantial. Like, casual sex is all, is, is fine for girls and boys. Number one, as long as you're being safe about it. Number two, as long as you know that that's, yeah, it's casual. I think when you start getting ahead of yourself and say you sleep with someone on the first date and you're like, right, well, that obviously means that, you know, we're, we're going to date again and I'm going to see him again. And like, that doesn't mean that. And as long as you're going into that, knowing that, you know, we could have sex right now and that's the end of... And if he didn't text me ever again, I'd be okay with that. That's what you need to, like, remember. Because I think men and women, but men kind of know you could sleep with them on, yeah, first date, third date, fourth date. They kind of already know what kind of girl you are and what they potentially see with you, regardless of if you sleep with them on the first date or not. So it, it doesn't really matter. And, I've always, and I see on TikToks all the time, people ask these kind of um, questions, like on other people's TikToks. And, you know, everyone's got their own story. Someone said, fucked on the first date, and now I've been married for four years. You know, or uh, didn't sleep with him for like three months, slept with him, it was terrible. And now we're just mates. Like, you know, what was the point in waiting? Just wasted three months talking to someone to realise that there was no sexual chemistry, like that, that there was no sexual chemistry and that you would have probably found that out if you'd slept with them on the first date and then you would have saved yourself a bunch of time. Yeah, like I said, I think it's very circumstantial. So as long as your mindset is just like, you know, yeah, essentially, this is probably just going to be, well, I need to be okay with the fact that this could potentially just be sex one time and that's that, then fine. As long as you're not getting ahead of yourself um, and predicting, you know, and think that because you sleep with them on the first date, that means that they owe you, you know, five more dates. I mean, that would be nice if you guys get on. And if he feels that way about you, then you probably will. But if he doesn't, then, you know, that's the end of that. You just got to think the older you get, it is it becomes a bit better to, and you can relax your mind a bit in terms of not putting pressure on the fact that having sex on a first date would mean that they're not going to respect you or like anything like that like and if he doesn't then he was not going to be the person for you anyway um because he fucking put out on the first date as well like who's he to like not respect you do you know what i mean he fucking shagged you shagged on the first date but sleeping with different people is another way of like allowing yourself to know what you like what you don't like uh, what you like from a partner and stuff like that. But as long as it's consensual and, you know, you're being safe, have fun. Like, you're in your, you live once. Like, do, like, there's no right or wrong answer. If, you, if, you, if you're saving yourself for someone special, then do that. If you want to sleep with someone every day of the week, then do that as long as you're being safe about it. Like, and it's, con and it's consensual, do you know what I mean? Like, it's your life. Do whatever you want. Don't be worried that you're gonna get judged like because the same people that would judge you for sleeping with someone on the first date is the same person that picks their nose and eats it <laughs> do you know what i mean everyone's got something that we could like that someone could judge them about who cares like who cares quite a few of you said um about the male contraceptive pill now <sighs> I would love for that to happen and that actually work, but it's not, is it? Because men make all the decisions for everyone, really. It's all the men in power. Um, and if there's any sort of side effect, they'll be like, no, <laughs> not doing it. Can you imagine, like, asking your boyfriend, are you on the pill? <laughs> That's just, it's just not, I, I kind of hope it happens, do you know what I mean? But is it going to... Probably not. I really hope it does. I would love... but and, and I think I saw a post about it. Like, you know, classic, those pages, like the Shade Borough or, like, whatever, uh, posted about it, and all the comments were underneath were like, no chance am I taking that. And it's like, well, why, why not? Because it might fuck with your hormones. Because it might put, make you depressed. It's what you're making us do. Do you know what I mean? So why wouldn't you do it? Like, why aren't the men being like, yeah? Of course, like, yeah, I'll take that. Like, there's no problem. 
if they really think that there's no problem with the pill, it's because they know there is, but they just don't want to be the ones to take it. And now they, that they might, they're like, um, no, I'm not doing that. And then therefore, if they're not willing to take it, they shouldn't make you take it either. You should work something else out, like... Just be like, fine, we'll both just use condoms then. How do you feel about that? And most of the boys will be like... <laughs> oh, damn it! Because uh, face it, as, um, it obviously feels better without one. But, you know, you'd be being safe. No one wants to go on the pill. No one's emotions and hormones need to be fucked with. Fine, let's use condoms. Someone said, my opinions on tattle life, I've never looked at it. I have, I have absolutely no desire to see what sh shit people are saying about me. I really couldn't give a fuck. What's it going to be? I, I can bet I can guess. Uh, she's loud and annoying. She's fat. Her fake tan. Well, actually, not so much anymore. Got a good road. Well, my tan's kind of off at the moment. But I used to... <laughs> Fake tan my hands pretty badly. So yeah, fake tan, terrible. Does all the same makeup looks on YouTube. Uh, thinks she's funny, but she's not. I don't know, just like shit like that that's just like... And like, fuck off, do you know what I mean? As long as it's not... Yeah, and I, I literally have no desire to know. Because it, sometimes it's nice to be blissfully unaware. And, like, I, and I don't want to see horrible stuff said about people that I know as well, like my mates and stuff. Like, no good comes from that website, and people that go on it, I think... What? I, d I don't know why you would ever want to be able to say... Like, I know, I, I'm sure there are accounts that, like, probably do it religiously. Like, on it every day, updating people on tea and drama and just their opinions. Imagine looking back at your life and being like, yeah, I spent my 20s, like, chatting shit and like saying really horrible things about girls on the internet what a waste of time number one how embarrassing to be able to say that's like how you spend the, these years of your life like <laughs> those people need therapy because there's obviously an underlying issue of you wanting to be heard you know I don't understand why that website's not been taken down. Uh, like, how is that a thing? Um, the police should be, like, there should be trackers to find out, number one, who these people are. Number two, just get the fucking website taken down. Like, wouldn't the world be in a better place? I don't even look at it, but it can't be good for anyone's mental health if they are continuously checking it. Anyway, someone said, Jack Harlow, is it a smash or pass? It's a fucking smash. The chokehold <laughs> that man has on me. Can't you see me with a man like Jack Harlow? I could. Like, he'd think I was hilarious. I know it. I keep seeing TikToks as well, obviously, of people being like, don't you just think there's like some celebrities that if you met them, you could pull, you know you could pull them. Do you know what I mean? I think Jack Harlow would think I was hilarious. I can't even get to meet him and for him to know that. Um, when is this video going to be up? Tomorrow, which is Thursday. So, guys, tomorrow, Friday, is when he's dropping that song that's had the world in a chokehold uh, with the Fergie sample and just the lyrics. I can't... Imagine if the rest of the song is fucking trash. That would be a shame. I'll just go back to listening to that 15 seconds. Like, he's literally released a 15-second snippet and it's gone crazy. Like, everyone's gone crazy. Everyone's gone feral. Everyone's saying that they're going to be pregnant to that song. Um, and he's doing the right thing. You know, like that, um... Birthday on my shirt, do, 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 song that, yeah, the snippet got leaked for SZA. And she didn't release it for, like, ages. Same with, like, the City Girls... There was a song, and again, they didn't release it for ages, and everyone was just like, well, the moment's passed now. He's doing the right thing. We've all gone crazy for it right now, so he's like, oh, my God, I'm releasing it on Friday, a.k.a. tomorrow when this video goes up. I'm excited. Like I thought, there is a lot on the health eating and the working outside of things. Don't want to bore you guys too much with that because I feel like I have spoken about it a lot, and I don't want 
to become like a fitness channel and like um like my instagram and stuff it just all be about that if you haven't watched previous videos or you didn't see my instagram stories the other day um i did mention sort of the routine that i'm in at the moment which is pt uh with my amazing pt shah uh three times a week we do two like full body type workouts um she told me that on friday we're going to be doing like all hit stuff which I know is good, and as much as I hate doing it at the time, they're the most, like, they're the workouts that I feel, like, after I did that session, I'm like, <sighs> I feel like I, I worked hard, and, I, and I'm, like, burnt lots of calories. Um, and then we do a leg and glutes day, because one of my goals was also to grow a dump truck. <laughs> Let's try and work on that. I've always had quite the, like... So I've always had a bum that, like, goes out. Like, when I turn to the side, I have, like, a butt. Um, but then when I face the front, or, like, I bend over, I'm just kind of, like, straight up and down. So, yeah. I kind of need to work on, like, maybe, like, the sides of my glutes and stuff if I want more, like, shape. Um, so we're going to be doing that. And then I also do a class once a week. I've got it tomorrow aka today when you guys are watching it i'll have gone to my class very intense uh like cardio intervals like 10 minutes of cardio like sprints um and then some abs and ass stuff the class is literally called abs and ass with yeah the cardio in between uh, it's pretty intense but i'm happy to just sort of do that once a week and then the pressure's kind of like off and i don't like dread it like every day yeah and then i've got like a free day to do whatever really either get some more cardio in it by cardio it would just be my walking that i like doing like my uh 12 3 30 thingy or have a rest day although I'm kind of counting my weekends as the rest days like saturday and sunday yes yeah, so i'm hoping in 10 weeks i should obviously if i stick to this as well as eating right as well my pts put all of my calorie like the calories that i should be in uh set up for me and like the protein i should be eating etc etc and i've been sticking to that and eating healthily it's a lot of just chicken salmon prawns with vegetables essentially but i quite like that i can be quite a plain jane so the diet side of things i'm not struggling with too too much um i don't know if like you can notice any sort of difference right now probably not i've been on my period as well so that's been a bit of a struggle of like just energy and never get yourself down about like weighing yourself on your period like even my pt was like don't do it because you are going to be heavier on your period obviously your boobs swell up on your period uh you've got like a full like lining forming which adds this extra weight everything just feels heavier on your period anyway so there's no point weighing yourself um whilst whilst you're on your period because if, if it says heavier you're gonna be like great <laughs> fucking you know going in the wrong direction with it so i haven't actually i've been on my period for the last week so i've not weighed myself to like even remotely check i've been doing it consistently now for a week and a half which doesn't sound too long at all and it's not very long at all <laughs> like eight weeks to go um but lots of you saying like obviously to keep you guys posted with it which i absolutely will i didn't know whether to like start a video like now and obviously finish it like at the end or just keep you guys posted like in weekly vlogs type thing let me know if you'd rather just see one video at the end where hopefully i've stuck to it i've done it there's you know a difference to show you or just keep you guys posted like in weekly videos and like on instagram let me know i'm still tempted to like archive everything on my instagram and just come back like still be active like on my stories and my youtube um a lot of you guys when i put that up on my stories said like please don't dip from youtube not on youtube i love youtube i've not fallen out with youtube at all just fallen a bit out of love with instagram because everyone <laughs> everyone looks the same at the moment dress is the same there's obviously just this style at the moment that is what's popular and i just don't 
feel like that's my style like I just don't wear clothes like that and I think as a result I don't know I'm just not wanting to, I don't know what to like do on it I don't know what to do on Instagram I don't know and especially because I'm going through like I've got this mindset now of like transforming myself um for me and like for my holidays and stuff I again I don't want to buy any new clothes because if I'm just you know buying for my size right now and then I end up like hopefully going down a size maybe like what was the point it's just a bit of a waste like do you see what I mean? Like, would you guys unfollow me if I just deleted all of my stuff on Instagram and said, like, back soon? But, like, obviously would still be active, like, on stories. I've probably got, like, work I'd have to, like, post on Instagram, obviously. So in that sense. But then I don't want people to think, well, she's just coming in to post her work and, like, going. Although that's exactly what I would be doing. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, in terms of, like, creative content, I'm just in a bit of a, like, rut on Instagram because everyone looks the same. And I think if that works for you and that's what's what it is, like, and everyone, like, and when I say everyone looks the same, that's not necessarily everyone, no, no one looks bad. Like, everyone looks fucking fly, gorgeous. Like, if I could wear cargo pants and, like, a mini corset top, then I would. But I don't think that really suits me. That's not really, like, my style. Love cargos, but, like... I feel like I would just be sort of wearing that to just sort of try and be, like, following the trends and, like, get the engagement up because that's what people are into at the moment. And that just doesn't feel like me. So, yeah, that's kind of why I want to just, like, archive everything on my Instagram and just start afresh when I know what I want to post and, like, the kind of person I am and my style. Is that really, like... Would you guys stick with me? Like, if I wasn't posting, like, actual posts on Instagram anymore. Still on YouTube and stuff, like I said. But just archive of everything. I don't know. Loads of you, when I put that up, said, do it. Or, like, just do it. It was like, do it, but stay on YouTube because I like your videos. Or, like, just do it, but, like, don't dip from every platform. Like, if it's just Instagram, it's just Instagram. And it's one of those things where... If I do that, it'll either make or break my Instagram. Because sometimes people dip, they come back, and no one cares about them anymore. Like, and therefore, that was a bit shit. Like, why did you do that? Um, or you dip and come back, and people are like, yes, yeah, she's back. And, like, the, the engagement's, like, through the roof. Do you know what I mean? It's one of those things. I'm just not sure what to do um but yeah i'm still gonna be active on youtube i'm active on youtube twitter my instagram stories it's just the actual posts i'm just a bit like i need newness in my life and maybe i need to be the newness that i'm craving which is i think the mentality that i'm in at the moment and maybe you guys want some newness too maybe you guys are sick of seeing the same old style and stuff but Anyway, let me know. Oh, my battery's about to die. Fuck. Right. I'll leave that there. I think this video is long enough as it is. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, Yeah, back with the drive with me's. If you guys want me to keep doing them, maybe actual drive, drive with me's. Not just like sat in the car park chatting to you guys, but I do like to do this. Just gives me some time to be like off my phone and just with myself and chatting about things, you know, that maybe I don't get to chat to people about. So, yeah, any questions that I asked throughout this video, shoot me your answers down in the comment section down below. I, I'm always interacting with you guys down there, and I love how interactive you guys are with each other down there. But, yeah, hope you enjoyed finishing my latte. It's time to go home. Oh, it's going to be fucking rush hour traffic, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, it is. God, yeah, I feel like I've just really released everything. This is probably a super long video, but I hope you guys don't mind. Uh, anyway, love yous. See you in the next video. Um, surround me, loves. Bye.